So we get off stage and we immediately, you know, Sam and Josh are barefoot. We immediately wash our feet and, and kind of cleanse. And then we have showers backstage. So we're, we're all, we don't really have to coach each other, which is wonderful because gosh, it could be a whole other story. But I, I, I think things are pretty all right. I'm Katie Darrell, and today we are at home and social with Danny Wagner of Greta Van Fleet, one of my favorite new bands. How are you, dude? I am wonderful. How are you? I, I am really good. Thank you for asking. I, tell you I, I know I use the word new, um, and it's just new because you're fresh, right? Like hot on the scene, sophomore album. Um, you know, finding your music was such a breath of fresh air. Um, do you seek out new music, or are you too busy to even look for it right now? Oh, we love looking for new music. Thankfully, like modern day technology has made that very easy for everyone. So, you know, having streaming platforms, we're, we're definitely avid music listeners. I'm really excited because you guys are, um, you, you're just kicking off another leg of your tour. Um, your last tour sold out. I like the ring of that. How did that feel? Really wonderful. I We have the best fans and it felt really cool to uh, just kind of get back out there. You know, it had been so long that we weren't really quite sure what it was going to be like. And it was just such a wonderful feeling to have that connection again. Did you feel, I mean, was there a moment where you kind of had to, you know, dust it off and get back into the vibe and kind of get your stage presence? Because let's be honest, Greta Van Fleet definitely has a, a stage presence. Oh, well, th yes, absolutely. Uh, our first show back in August of 21 was uh that dusting off and you know it had been two years that's the longest we'd ever gone without playing so we were more nervous than ever but it after you know a song into the set it was like riding a bike are there um kind of split personalities of the guys of Greta Van Fleet like when you are doing rehearsals is there are there a couple of days where you don't turn it on and then you're like okay guys tomorrow we're like really having to push forward and do it or you know is that charisma always there I would say the charisma is always there. Uh, <laughs> our, our, our rehearsals and practices are uh, a, a hoot. <laughs> they're, they're a lot of fun. And we're a jam band. So, you know, we just have fun with it all the time. It's never work. It's always, it's always pleasure. Your style's fantastic as well. Um, people would say it's reminiscent of very 70s classic rock. Have you always had that style? I mean, if we went back and we looked at little 15-year-old Danny, what was little 15-year-old Danny wearing? It wasn't too far off. Uh, it, the hair was a little bit shorter, <laughs> but, yeah. but, uh, clothing wise, you know, we just kind of tried to keep it cheap. We would go to Goodwills and thrift stores and, and, you know, it happened to be, uh, flashy clothing and, and we liked expressing ourselves and, and not, you know, staying so reserved as, as far as dressing and not fitting into a mold. So it, I think it just kind of came from self-expression. When you're out on tour, uh, do you try and hit up the thrift stores? Oh, absolutely. If my suitcase, uh, allows it because, <laughs> <laughs> We're pretty packed full. What city seems to have the best um, collection of thrift stores? Ooh, honestly, it's really cool. I, uh, I love um, Camden and London as far as like the European scene goes or the UK scene, uh, but also out West, you know, Oregon and like Portland is wonderful. Uh, anywhere in California is great. The tour is in motion right now, but in addition to everyone getting to see you in the arenas and at these great venues, um, you know, it's festival season, my friend, and you are going to be at Bourbon and Beyond. That's uh, September 15th through 18th. So many great bands on this. Do you love a good festival because it's a networking type thing? I love a good festival. I think the energy is just incredible. And like you said, the lineups are kind of all of it too. It, to, to share the stage with like Pearl Jam and, you know, all those legendary artists. It's so cool. Are, are you able to go up and like, be like, Hey, Eddie Vedder, I'm Danny Wagner, you know, of Greta Van Fleet. And well, did you, did you get to have those Wayne's world moments where you're like, hey, I'm, the, I'm, the shy, I'm the shy one of the band. So I, I'm not really the extrovert, uh, naturally going up and, and saying hello, but, uh, if they come say hello, that's, that's cool. <laughs> So uh, we were talking about the Bourbon and Beyond Festival. This is great. The lineup is fantastic. I mean, you know, besides Pearl Jam, uh, they're Jack White, Alondis Morissette, Brandy Carlisle. Um, are these all a bunch of acts that this will be your first time actually getting to see them in person live? Or have you seen them, you know, perform before? Oh, absolutely. I think all except for Brandy Carlisle, we uh, have seen her before. Um, but yeah, no, it's going to be special. And it's just ever growing. So cool. Do you drink bourbon? 
Uh, I do drink bourbon. I am more of a bourbon over a whiskey person. Not that there is much of a difference. Um, okay. but bourbon before bed is, is a good thing on tour. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I'm a, more of a whiskey gal. So I'm like, whiskey makes okay. you whiskey. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, there's nothing wrong with whiskey. It's just not my cup of tea. Um, but the fans, the fans at uh, these festivals are really cool because I mean, they've, they've shelled out a good amount of money because, you know, it's a, you know, three, four day weekend. So it's not cheap. Um, uh, what, what are, what are the fans like at festivals versus when they're at one of your arena tours? Um, you know, I think it's different in the sense that, uh, you know, for the arena tours, everyone is there for a specific, uh, reason. And that is, you know, the, the one or a few couple artists they bought the tickets for, but at festivals, they're really there to just have the time of their lives. You know, it doesn't matter and kind of just free float and, and, and just have fun. So, so the energy is super high at festivals and not to mention that the crowds tend to be a little bit larger, which is really cool. And they all feed off of each other. And yeah, it certainly makes our job a little bit easier on stage looking out and seeing that sea of people. So it's, it's really special. Um, can we talk about Metallica? Oh yeah, we can talk about Metallica. Dude, yeah. I mean, okay. So when you guys got the call that said, hey, you are going to get paired and play a couple of shows with Metallica, was that, I, I imagine there are a couple of handful of moments that really stand out and please tell oh, me that, that was one. one was one of them. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Metallica is a big part of our lives. Like growing up, that was, they are the biggest uh, rock band in the world. You know, that is, and that's a statement I'm, I'm more than willing to make. But when we got that call, I, there, there really weren't a whole lot of words. We kind of just looked at each other and went, really? Us? You know, and, yeah. and we we're honored. Uh, and they're such nice guys. They really are. They, they welcomed us in. They're an excellent role model for, um, you know, being that headline artist, bringing on a younger group. They, mm -hmm. they really just were so humble and, and treated us so well and our crew so well and everything was just smooth sailing. Um, other highlights of your career thus far, which is so fun to say that this is a career, right? Like you're doing it. Congratulations. Yeah. I you guess did it. it's professional, right? <laughs> you get a paycheck, maybe, hopefully, sometimes. Sometimes. Talk to management about that. Yeah. Um, but so other great moments for Greta Van Fleet, um, obviously getting nominated for multiple Grammys and then winning. Um, let's talk about also a bunch of TV performances, whether it be Jimmy Kimmel or SNL. Walk mm. me through some of these. As these, these come through management via email, text, phone, I don't even know how you communicate these days, um, airplane writing in the sky. Um, do you take the moments to absorb how cool they are and each one is just as exciting? Or are you kind of like, oh yeah, guys, we're number one again. And oh yeah, we're going on SNL. Well, I guess if I paint a little bit of a picture, so most of those things all happened within like a year, which was mm -hmm. the, the most chaotic year so far of, of, ever, of everything, but it was beautiful chaos. It was wonderful, but we were so busy that we didn't really have a whole lot of time to process things. And it wasn't like, you know, we were shoving it off going, oh yeah, there's another one of these. We were, we were taking it in, but we just couldn't believe it. You know, you just showed up and did it. And um, as they all just happened right one after another which was really quite special uh snl was amazing that was a dream of ours that we've all been watching snl our entire lives and to have some of the cool casts uh there alec baldwin was there and uh, yeah our heroes it was super fun um tv shows are fun even getting the opportunity to do it during the pandemic was kind of wild too um but yeah no just absolutely nuts and now that we've had the pandemic we've had the time to process it and kind of look back and went wow that happened. <laughs> right. I mean, to get hit right before like everything got locked down, you know, having that first album out was, was probably so important to your career, right? Oh yeah. No, it was, that was, we were very fortunate to have had, you know, a, an established sort of foundation before that happened. For those of you just joining us, I'm Katie Darrell. He's Danny Wagner of the band Greta Van Fleet. Um, do you Google yourself? <laughs> uh, not really. Um, what I do Google, though, are uh, the, our show dates. <laughs> <laughs> I do that all the time. I have people asking me uh, if we're going to be in such and such area. And I'm, I'm just kind of like secretly Google because I know it's an easy way to find our tour dates. Um, but I've never actually really Googled myself. Maybe once or twice to see if they have my height right or my eye color right or... <laughs> 
know where's my weight at what's my net worth i don't know yeah do i need to diet do i look fat in this video let's talk about videos the videos are great again the vibe and everything that you're laying out there it's very on point it's very on brand as they would say um do you feel comfortable shooting music videos or is is it awkward are you self-conscious at all no, we, uh, we love it. Um, it's, it's fun. Film has always been a big part of our lives, uh, whether it's, you know, and that's one way to incorporate film into music because we, Josh and, and Jake uh, and Sam all grew up watching. Josh specifically went to college for a couple of years for film. So we're all like pretty natural with the whole idea and, and loved, you know, to address something like that and be creative and take our own liberties with it. Um, so we have a lot of fun with it and then designing the clothing and, uh, even playing over a track and like or dead silence, and there's it's, there's never an awkward uh, low point. Do you ever get outvoted because the other band members are brothers? All the time, <laughs> oh. but it's more so I just don't want to, you know, step into it, uh, and that's totally fine. Uh, um, I am a brother. I am not a blood brother, but I am absolutely a brother. Um, and and I'd say we're all we all have our own uh, purpose in the band, you know. They 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 we all have pushes and pulls, and then I'm kind of a mediator of sorts, uh, but not not a physical. I don't really step in. It's just my presence kind of offers that. Um, but no, no, I'm, I I keep my distance. Willingly. So what what happens at you know you spend all this time on the road, right? You are a family. Mm -hmm. uh, you're one of the brothers, but then Thanksgiving comes and they all like hang out with like their family and you have to go to your other, your, your family, right? Or do you co-mingle at the holidays? Well, our families live right down the road from each other, uh, back, well, back, you know, home in Michigan. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then we all live in the same uh, area now. So depending on like where our schedules lie, uh, in the past, we always just went home to our families for a couple of days where I, I, I see these boys at least uh, I spend at least a third of the year and like in total everything uh, with them. So, you know, having a couple of days off is very normal. That's, that's how we grew up doing it. But during the pandemic, we had a, uh, Thanksgivings together because, you know, we couldn't, we didn't feel comfortable going home um, to sure. families and grandparents and, and such. So we, you know, we just kind of mix it up. We play by ear. Who's the, who's the best cook in the band? Oh man, Jake. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's his specialty? Uh, everything. Jake is a wonderful, he's, he's got that sort of like chemist uh, mentality when, you know, Sam's really phenomenal cook too. Uh, but Jake is the one that um, dates back longest to me. I, in high school, he was whipping up uh, Michelin star meals. It was absolutely insane. He'll, anything from pasta to three days making a soup or you know, it's mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah. Uh, who is the most OCD in the band? Josh. Okay. You like how quick I am with this? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who's the stinkiest when you get off stage? Who's the one that's the most potent? Well, I'm the one doing the most work. I, I, I don't really, I think that one's actually a, an even split, I, ha I have to say, because I don't naturally sweat that much. It's just I'm doing a lot of work. But I think if you went up to all of our wardrobe cases and took a whiff, I don't think you could tell which one is which. They're all pretty bad. So what, what are the rules with uh, stinkiness and on the bus and everything? Like, is there like, you have to keep your shoes on? Like, what are the rules? Uh, the, the rules that are that there really aren't many rules on the bus. The, the bus stays pretty clean. We're all very clean people. So, so we get off stage and we immediately, you know, Sam and Josh are barefoot. And we immediately wash our feet and, and kind of cleanse. And then you know, we have showers backstage. So we're, we're all, we don't really have to coach each other, which is wonderful because gosh, it could be a whole other story, but I, I, I think things are pretty all right. Uh, your song, Heat Above, from your sophomore album, so yeah. good. It's so good. I know everyone probably has their own favorites. That is my favorite. Um, talk me through this song. I just, I want to know the story. I want to know the backstory. I want to hear about the creation of this, the recording of it, um, how it started versus how it ended. Absolutely. So this one is one of the oldest ones uh, on the album. I think it may even be the oldest one from that. Um, we wrote it, oh man, probably six or seven years prior to the release, or at least started the writing process. Okay. We were we were at um, their uncle's beach house in Michigan, in Muskegon on the lake. And, you know, his, his uncle had instruments. And, and back then it was 
I mean, it still happens this way, but writing just kind of came out of nowhere. Someone would pick a guitar up and we would play cover songs or whatever for, around the fire. But then all of a sudden, like it would come out of nowhere. And and Jake started playing what is the the, the guitar riff and the um, and the verses. And immediately Josh started singing. And it was wonderful. And we kind of just started piecing it together. We all jumped on instruments. Um, it came together very quickly. We actually started playing it back then too. You know, we, we started gathering all these songs for this new album. And our idea was we wanted to create something very cinematic and very expressive and to, to, to really kick off this universe that we're trying to create um, in this Greta Van Fleet universe. And, and it's a very dynamic, uh, potentially deep song so we kind of revisited it for the first time in years what was years at the time and it was really cool we brought it in and just like it brought us right back to that moment in Michigan um finished finished writing it that day you know finishing touches and then recorded it immediately live which was really special when the band is sitting around jamming right and you're working on things and you know so it's easy oh a guitar is always probably right there right vocals always are with you right Mm -hmm. for you do you do you bring sticks around are you more of a i hit on the table type of guy like how do you come into the hey we're just sitting around a campfire jamming right are you on your legs uh so if we're performing at a campfire i'll i'll find a cardboard box or or something like that um or or i'll play guitar guitar is my first instrument and my first love and it is way more convenient to bring a guitar around like you said there's almost one everywhere so uh, when I tour, I always bring one with me um, and uh, I feel kind of disconnected if I don't have any sort of stringed instrument with me. But uh, when we're writing, we all have guitars. We all play uh, a few instruments or piano or, or whatnot. And because um, they're definitely, we all contribute very equally. And that's a really special thing. And that keeps things very interesting in the, in the, as far as the dynamic goes. So if guitar is your first love, do you ever have resentment being shoved at those uh, <laughs> boxes in the back? No, not really. At first, it, I was a little bit torn, but that just stemmed from me not having had any experience with the drums. You know, I'd, I'd spent like eight years playing guitar before I'd even really started focusing on drums. Um, but it was cool because I taught myself drums and I took guitar lessons and I took other music lessons, but drums felt like very special and personal to me mm-hmm. because I had no experience. and. And I'm gifted with, you know, like an ear with pitches and anything with notes, but I really had to work for that rhythm um, aspect of it. And it's like a completely different uh, nature of, of approaching playing. And it felt very right um, with the other guys uh, being being on drums. I, I When I first met them and we first started, or not met them, but when we first started playing with each other, I would play guitar a lot and it just didn't feel as right we already had a guitarist you know and 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 then they really pushed me we all push each other and they have made me the drummer i am today can you read music i can read music yeah Mm -hmm. all right that's cool can the other guys is Uh, that like your uh, superhuman trick no say it's it's a very special one you know not many people can no i you gotta you gotta understand i mean there are so many people that i interview that cannot read music and, no, I, I mean, I can't, right? But it's like, I mean, I, I've interviewed everyone from, you know, Mick Fleetwood to Carney Wilson. So many will admit like that they can't read it. You know, I'll admit I have only had to use it once in my entire professional career. And it's and, like geometry. Yeah. And it was, it was quite literally on this last album, we were writing string parts. And like the only way to actually communicate to the string players who are professionals is via written music. So like Sam and I really had to dust that off. Yes, we know how, but we had to really kind of focus and take a second and go, all right, so we have to communicate to these people how to play, you know, the way that we are envisioning it. So, yeah, so we have used it, you know, it does come in handy, but I, at the same time, I don't think you need it. Robert Plant uh, said that Greta Van Fleet is Led Zeppelin. What do you think of that? Well, that's uh, that's quite the statement, considering it came from Led Zeppelin. <laughs> uh, you know, it's 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 cool. We've we've gotten that our entire lives, and the, every time we hear it, it's 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 humbling. It's it's a compliment. Um, I think Led Zeppelin is uh, a live band, and they have created a universe, and they have you know done prolific things uh, for rock and roll in general. And I think it's one of the highest honors. And we've always we've always felt that way. Yes, we hear it a lot, um, uh, but to hear it from someone like that is 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 definitely something special. So, 
Hanson said, Greta Van Fleet is Hanson. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Wouldn't you be like, what? How oh, that's you? a whole other story. I don't think we have enough time for that one. You are so into umbop. You are. <laughs> mm -hmm. How'd you know? How do you push yourself? At this point, you know, you have so many great accolades and success stories. How do you keep the drive going? Um, you know, we just we just enjoy what we do and and we don't <laughs> we don't consider ourselves the best musicians ever. You know, we we just kind of keep pushing each other and we're constantly trying to get better. And we're uh it's borderline insecurity, but we but it, you know, it kind of helps us. We we that fire will never go out. Um between ourselves because we know we we have so much uh that we can still learn and and gain from uh continuing this career and and getting better is is one of our favorite things to do so i i think the drive will always be there between ourselves that sophomore album came out in 2021 here we are in the middle of 2022 um is there a smell of new music coming our way there may be actually yes there is <laughs> We've been, we've been working for, for for the majority of this year and we're almost 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 there with it you know it just takes a second to get it out but you can expect some stuff uh sooner than you think fantastic well danny wagner of greta van fleet uh the band is out on tour right now tickets are available you can also catch them at uh bourbon and beyond which sounds delicious and sounds wonderful good music um thank you for spending time with me today my god thank you for having me thank you